the joint meeting of the uh, City of Rufford County Council and the Greater Rufford County Park District. Long time coming, we're thrilled to have it. Welcome to everyone here in the crowd. Uh, the purpose of today's meeting is to have a uh, discussion uh, regarding the uh, potential acquisition of the Ocean Breeze Golf Course. Uh, today, there will be no decision made today. This is more of an open discussion. And I will say that this meeting has to adjourn at 5.45 because we have a city council meeting at 6 p.m. over our council chambers. If you don't get a chance to have public comment here, follow us over because we'll have plenty of time over there to have public comment as well. Uh, so at this, at this moment, I'm going to have each of our um, individuals here at the table uh, introduce themselves, beginning with Deputy Mayor Malay. Hi, I'm Mike Malay. I'm the Deputy Mayor of Boca Raton, and happy to be here to join me with the Beach Park District. It's good to see that there are so many folks who are interested in what we're talking about. Good afternoon, everyone. Jeremy Rogers, Councilman from Boca Raton. Very excited to see the interest out there. Hi, I'm Deanna Grunfeeder, City Attorney. Hi, I'm Levi Nelson, the manager. Scott Singer, City Councilman, CA. Happy to see you all. Robert Weinrod, City Council. Thank you very much. Mr. Rollins. Uh, thank you, Mary. Andy Bob Rollins, the current chair of the Beach Park District. And on my left is our executive director, Mr. Arthur Costi. And on my right, Aaron Wright, and I'm very happy to be here. Steve Engel, and it's a pleasure to see democracy in action. Susie Bubblesang, and welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Well, Mr. Rollins, I will um, pass to you to uh, begin the discussion. Thank you, Mary. What I'd like to do is just kind of uh, bring uh, Grace to the forefront for where we've been yes. and where we're going. Uh, back in uh, early November, the Beach Park District Commission discussed the possible acquisition of the Ocean Breeze uh, Golf Course. I'll uh, go back. Uh, in early November, the Beach Park District Commissioners discussed uh, the uh, ongoing issue with Ocean Breeze Golf Course. and. Uh, unanimously uh, decided that it was in the community interest and be best served that Ocean Breeze uh, was placed in our public inventory. Uh, we advised the city in a letter to the mayor and council that the district would welcome the opportunity to, to participate in the discussion and possible acquisition of Ocean Breeze Golf Course. Subsequent to that, uh, discussions with Lennar indicated that they would be willing to sell the course and Beach and Park District Commissioners agreed that we would pursue the purchase and in February submitted a request to the city to allow us to negotiate the purchase of Ocean Breeze. Our enabling legislation required that we proceed this fashion on any purchase of uh, property that we have the approval of city council. In January, as I said, uh, Lennar agreed to an outright sale to the district and at a council meeting of February 14th, uh, the city council was asked to uh, agree for us to pursue the offer to purchase Ocean Breeze, and we're here to update you on the progress today. So far, we have begun assimilating financial data to put in front of you a performer on the financial feasibility of operating this course in a manner consistent with the park operations that the public has come to expect from Beach and Parks District and from the city. We are examining the golf operations, uh, the revenue opportunities of both both the municipal Osprey Golf Course, uh, the consideration of a, a golf training facility with the help of Greg Norman, similar to his golf training school that he has in South Carolina, and the possibility, which we hope to come to fruition, of beginning a junior golf program at Ocean Breeze. It would be our request that once we have this forum pulled together, that uh, BPD, Beach and Park District, be put on your regular agenda so that we might present our plan of operation and answer your questions related to the purchase and acceptable to you, provide the district with funding similar to the Ocean Strand and Sugar Sand Park uh, purchase. With the help of the Merv Timberlake, uh, we have determined that the district to make this purchase with your financial assistance without disrupting our normal operations or the projects that we already have in planning, and we would anticipate no changes to our millage rate. Lenar has offered this opportunity to purchase Ocean Breeze regardless of who might be the successful bidder of the property known as Pokey Municipal. We look forward to the Council's continued support for the district to acquire 
the last large parcel of 209 acres that will be preserved for the enjoyment and recreational needs of our community. That's an update on our position, uh, uh, Mayor, and uh, we're hoping that uh, And then we hope once the financial data is uh, proven to our satisfaction that we bring it to uh, the City Council that will receive a <coughs> review and treatment of this request. Thank you, Mr. Altsum. Mr. Costa, when do you anticipate having uh, those documents in hand so that we can schedule you? We have begun, uh, Mayor, some of the preliminary uh, financial gathering in conjunction with uh, the Greg Norman Academy to determine the value that they can bring to us and preparing the revenues uh, that are enjoyed by some of the other municipal or public golf courses in the area, as well as uh, analyzing some of the unaudited financial information from the city of Boca Raton. I think in order to have a complete uh, pro forma analysis, that first must be presented to our district so that the district commissioners themselves are satisfied and then come to the city council that we would request a workshop uh, at some time, possibly the uh, last meeting in April. And I think if you could allow us at that time uh, 30 minutes, uh, I may be able to bring some celebrities with, with us, uh, but I think that what you will see is that the ability of, that is contained within the acreage that we know as Ocean Breeze can not only bring enjoyment to the community, but can bring a financial reward to the community. We're not here tonight to discuss appraisals, and we're not going to come forward with you uh, with emphasis placed on those appraisals, but rather, what is the income that we can expect to enjoy? And looking at it from purely a business approach, uh, and hopefully, as we convince, as, as we have an opportunity to uh, evaluate it ourselves, if we so agree that upon our presentation you will likewise agree that it is appropriate for the district to acquire this property. Thank you, Mr. Arnold. The second uh, meeting in April, perhaps a workshop. Yes, I think would be a wonderful opportunity to go ahead and schedule that. We, we certainly will move bounds to accommodate you in that manner. Are any members of the commission want to um, make any comments at this time uh, regarding the transaction? Commissioner Wright? No. All in favor. So it was a unanimous um, um, endorsement of your board. Yes, sir. We, we've had uh, many public meetings where the public has weighed in on the discussion, and uh, we have discussed it and each time we have had a position in a unanimous fashion that the uh, commission was uh, in favor of it. And as Mr. Koski said, we'll look at the financial reform and uh, I'm sure we'll find the opportunity to generate the process. We cannot be arguing. So, Mayor, hey, uh, the commissioners uh, and uh, several uh, folks on the issue have uh, come forward unanimously and uh, wanted to go forward to the purchase and are looking forward to the financial performance of it so we can make certain that uh, we're doing a, 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 a our fiduciary duty for the citizens of our community. Excellent. Uh, members of my board, comments, questions? Deputy Mayor Malak? Not, not really any questions, but we, we uh, under the circumstances here, it's necessary for the city of Boca to approve purchase of, of a property in the city, and we have approved that, and uh, at this point, I don't think that there's any really any, anything more that the city council can do until we find, if we see the documents that the Mr. Koski is talking about presenting. So uh, we're making that progress, I would, I want to emphasize once again, we are talking about a public activity as opposed to a private purchase, so these things do take time and are many steps. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Rogers. I look forward to hearing and seeing what you're going to be brought next. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Singer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you all for what you've done in terms of continuing the conversation and finding a solution to a need for uh, golf. I just, and I know we're not prepared to talk about all the financials, but is there any more information you can share a little bit now about the negotiations, the purchase price, and how you expect um, to the funding, because I was pleased to hear that you don't believe a millage require, increase will be required. I'm sure they're somehow connected. And I don't know if you have anything you can just give some update on that now, please. Uh, Councilman Singer, uh, Mr. Timberlake has reviewed uh, our uh, five-year, ten-year plan, uh, keeping in consideration the projects that we have on our plate right now, which are currently budgeted, and some of which, one of which may hopefully move forward. Uh, and we feel that based upon the uh, initial uh, purchase price that has been proposed by Lenara. And keep in mind, and let me just digress, that this has nothing to do with the swap. This is a straight up purchase. Oh, yes. Uh, that based upon that, that uh, we can afford as a district to acquire this property in conjunction with the city under an interlocal agreement, similar to those used at Ocean Strand and Sugar Sand Park, without any impact on our millage rate or on our budget. Uh, we also believe, and I verily believe, that on the basis of what I have seen and what I have heard to date from some professionals in the area, that we have a great opportunity to have the Ocean Breeze Golf Course, which consists of three full nine-hole facilities, uh, be put in such a condition at uh, a reasonable price uh, in that we can possibly uh, double or even exceed doubling the number of uh, uses uh, that we have at the current municipal course. And uh, it's not, not a reflection on the city or the city staff, maybe a reflection on the location or other factors but the unaudited statements of the golf course last year with the city show a negative $600,000. And I think with, uh, just as a comparison, an uh, 1.4 million uh, net at Osprey, even though there's a difference in, in conditions, that we can bring our uh, total net revenues on this facility into a position where not only can we subsidize what we're going to have for debt service retirement, but also provide a uh, profitable operation for the benefit of the taxpayers as well. Uh, there are many, many opportunities. Uh, I personally would love to see a junior program. Uh, and I think if we could work with business leaders in the community, uh, and not everybody has to have a lot of money to play golf, but you need some. But I'd like to see business leaders donate golf clubs for kids that are 5 to 12 years old so that everybody has an opportunity to participate in this wonderful game. Uh, and I think if we put this in such a fashion with Mr. Norman, his learning academy, and what I see the, and the operation that he conducts, this could be an attraction of a worldwide type of of nature, bringing people from everywhere. So uh, the numbers are somewhat nebulous right now. I wish I had an exact numbers for you, but believe me, when we come in in 45 days, we'll have those numbers for you. Okay. And Mr. Constantine, do you think in 45 days you'll be able to provide numbers that, uh, pro forma numbers without, say, for example, a regular facility or facility of that type? Uh, that it'd be helpful to know that just in case that didn't happen, that this transaction, I, what impact would still have, hopefully not. On the military. I certainly will be able to provide you with that alternative, but I can assure you that each and every one of my conversations with the Norman Group, they are chomping at the bit to become part of the city of Montreal. Thank you. Mr. Weinberg. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first, I'd like to thank uh, Lenar for uncoupling the two transactions. As many people know who've been following us for the last few months, 
We are dealing with actually two golf courses. We have one in the West, which we are going to make a decision on as far as the uh, transaction to probably sell that course. And we have, of course, the one in the East, where the council, at the behest of uh, Councilman Rogers, unanimously approved a resolution to say that we want to keep golf in the city of Boca Raton, and we maintain the position as a council that we're going to do everything we can to make Ocean Breeze the golf course that can be a municipal golf course. So that being said, I think that this council stands ready to work with the Beecher Parks District. And again, it's we're in a very fortuitous situation. We're going to probably receive over $70 million for a course out west. And the maximum I can see us spending on the course in the east is about $24 million. So there is going to be at least a $50 million profit on moving from the west to the east. So again, we are in a very enviable position. I'm sure many cities would love to be in the, in the situation we are right now of trying to, again, drill down into these financials. I am eager to see the appraisals. I am eager to see the, uh, the pro forma that is going to be developed over the next 45 days. But, you know, from all intent, all, everything I've heard, this is definitely a doable transaction. I think the City Council is eager to move forward with this in a fashion that makes sense for our entire community. And I think that this is really a win-win for everybody. Thank you, Mayor. exciting opportunity for Boca Raton and uh, we certainly appreciate all of you being here and being with us through this and I'm sure you'll, you'll see us through till uh, till Mr. Rollins hits that first drive off the tee, right? <laughs> so this time we're going to move to um, public request, public comment. Uh, we I have many cards and our time is short so I'm going to limit each speaker to three minutes. Uh, Dick Wiggins followed by Hope Clubby. Please come forward, give us your name and address and you'll have three minutes. Were there other bids uh, out for the, the course other than Lenar? I don't know. Lenar is. Are we, are we talking about the uh, Ocean Beach course? Yes, yes. Uh, Lenar assumed the uh, debt uh, from Wells Fargo from the property. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's right. what I was wondering. Right. So they're, they're the ones that are going to sell it. They're the ones that uh, will have the ability to sell it to us. Yes, okay, sir. and this has nothing to do with the purchase out west. No, sir. Okay, good. That's all I have time. All right. Thank you. Hope Clevy, followed by Gary Reed. <laughs> followed by Dick Siemens. You can line up before you just speak. I'm Hope Levy, I'm at 401 North East Lima Boulevard, uh, Boca Raton. I just, I, I saw in the mandatorial that, in the paper, that this is going to be $24 million for them to, to purchase, and I don't, the taxpayers are going to be hurt by that because this is, the appraisal is only around $7 million. I don't know why we're going to end up paying $24 million for a $7 million property and only the taxpayers are going to be hurt. And I, I'm posing a sale for that amount of money. Right, thank you. Barry Reed? I have the same answer as you did. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Followed by Natalia Yushina. I'm um, in favor of the city buying. Can you give us your name and address for the record? Richard Stevens, 500 Southeast of Family. I'm in favor of the city buying this 209 acre parcel. It's a rare opportunity to be able to buy this amount of space in a relatively urban environment. The problem I have is how are we doing this? And I understand that we're good for certain to this West Golf Course, thanks to GL Homes. Uh, and you have three bids that are all 73 million, so one, whichever way it goes, you're going to get 73 million. That doesn't mean you have to throw the money away. 
The question you have basically is, what is the value of what you are purchasing? The, the uh, paper produced by the district, uh, taxing district, is very well done. The facts are very well stated until you get to the last page and a half. In the last page and a half, we find that what they're relying upon is an appraisal done by the seller. Now, I've only been in this business my whole life, and I've never purchased a piece of property based upon an appraisal by the seller. It doesn't make any sense. The district asked for an appraisal, hired Callaway Price, people I've used many, many times, very credible people. They said this property is only worth $5.7 million. Well, when R says it's worth very few, well, if you look at it and you say, well, we can get 211 units. They don't have 211 units, and the probability I'm getting them at this stage is pretty slim. But if, even if you say that, okay, that's all right, you get a 211 units, you got 33 million, that's $150,000 for a townhouse unit. Of course, they failed to say in their pronouncements here that when the 211 units was approved by the city, there were a lot of conditions, roughly costing somewhere between six and eight million dollars, as I recall. When you add that on, it's another thirty thousand, forty thousand dollars a unit. When you take the improvement costs on sites, another twenty. By the time you turn around, it's over two hundred thousand dollars a unit. If you were going to follow that progression, well, what do you have to sell these units for? If you got over two hundred thousand dollars a unit for land, the answer is over eight hundred thousand dollars a unit for a townhouse. I don't think so in that location, with all due respect. But it doesn't matter. They don't have the right to do that. They won't have the right to do that until the city council says they got it. I don't think the city council is ready to give anybody 211 units on this golf course. Okay? So this whole thing doesn't make any sense. And I appreciate the fact that the city's getting 73 million, but that doesn't mean we have to give it away. Thank you. The, uh, the workshop meeting. I'm Natalia, welcome. Followed by Bruce Lobster. Hello. So my name is Natalia. It's 21319 Talway Drive, Boca. I have a question I and mean, a comment slightly off golf course, so I apologize, but still about parts. I'm a certified fitness trainer, personal trainer, and I've been helping many, many people with post rehab and corrective exercises and many, many needs. But here, I cannot do it in the city of Boca. I cannot do it in parks, in public parks, because there is no such thing as a, a permit for commercial use for public parks. So I would like to do it somehow anyway and keep training my clients outside, but I need something for that because I am not allowed. All right, thank you so much. I don't think that's so much on topic, but, but our city staff is taking your name and we'll contact you. Mr. Blotzer, followed by Adam Galicki. Hi, good evening. Bruce Blotzer, 2365 Northwest 43rd Street in Boca. Um, I heard a lot today, and, and I'm not a dumb guy. I'm not a smart guy, but I'm not a dumb guy. But in, in reference to what Mr. Seaman said, it made a lot of sense to me. The fact that someone's going to pay $73 million and you're going to pay $24 million, you're going to have a $50 million windfall, who wouldn't want that? But what if the 50 turn into 60? Why would you pay more and then use the argument, well, we're getting 73 million, so we're going to have 50 million? If, if you are all willing to pay $24 million for a property that, and I know Mr. Kosky said he want to get into the numbers, but from my understanding, it was a $5.7 million appraisal. Maybe that's not the right number, maybe that is, I don't know. But why would you want to be paying $24 million for a $5.7 million property? If you guys are, Please call me. I left my number on there. I'd be happy to sell you my house. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. And then the city's point, I don't really understand how it works, how it gets paid for ultimately. I know he said the village won't go up, but I'm sure the city's going to pay for it. The residents are going to pay for it in some way. Are you willing to write a $24 million mortgage on a $5.7 million property? I don't think that you are. And, and so somehow it's going to have to get paid, and, and it's okay to get tough with Lenar. I mean, they put a bid on there, and they have an appraisal, and we get an appraisal, but we get to negotiate that. And that's, 
you guys are working for us. And I think what we all want, we all want the golf course for the most part we do. I think it would be a great thing. And all the talk about, you know, uh, Greg Norman, all the, that would be great for the city to have a junior program. But at the right price, don't overpay just because we're getting a big windfall on the, on the West Golf Course. Thank you. I appreciate your comments. My name is Alan Galiki. I've been living in Boca Raton since 32 years. This is the first time in front of the city council. So thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, I see this whole issue as uh, two sets of numbers. The 72 or 70 some billion dollar offer is a fact. The second number mentioned by the city council member, the 24 million dollar, is some abstract number which has absolutely no backup in any of the current appraisals. So I only hope that before the city makes the final decision to purchase it, the proper procedure of uh, evaluation, appraisals, uh, will be followed and that uh, the city doesn't overpay for the golf course property than what it's really worth. Thank you. Thank you very much. Judith Keller Kay, followed by Rob Duquesne. Judith Keller Kay, 2405 East Maya Palm Drive. Let me start by saying that I think that there is general agreement that Boca Raton should buy Ocean Breeze and develop it as a public golf course. And I don't disagree with that conclusion. However, that does not mean that the city should even consider overpaying for Ocean Breeze. The $24 million price tag, which Lennar has attached to the property, represents 3.5 times the highest fair market valuation. One of the primary duties of the council is to avoid squandering taxpayer money. Even contemplating paying way over market would be unconscionable. Moreover, at a time when residents, I believe unfairly, accuse the council of being in the pocket of developers, <coughs> providing an unjustified windfall to Lennar, a major developer, would only add to the distrust that some residents have of city government and selected officials. Frankly, were the city to pay Lennar anything above the appraised valuation, the <coughs> transaction would smell to high heaven. A fair question would be, who would profit from such a transaction? Certainly not the taxpayers. Buying Ocean Breeze may require some patience, something that many of us in the room may not want to hear, particularly if Lennar keeps trying to extort the city. But if it takes a year or two for Lennar to see reason, so be it. Once Lennar understands that the city will not overpay, Lennar will have little choice but to begin reasonable negotiations. In any case, I would suggest beginning eminent domain proceedings against whatever portion of the property can be taken by eminent domain as part of the effort to let Lennar know that the city will not be cheated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, uh, my name is Robert Duquette, uh, 5351 West 3rd Terrace. I uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak in front of both the City Council and Park District. I want to start off by saying that uh, the price being offered is certainly comparable to all other uh, recreational land that's been acquired by the city and the district over the last 30 years. Uh, when you factor in over two and a half million dollars was spent per acre for the wildfire site, and it's still a vacant site. Uh, the Stormley Park was $150,000 per acre, uh, which is now a beautiful park thanks to the cooperative effort on a similar basis as what we're looking for here today. So at a comparable valuation, which is what's often done in real estate, $150,000 an acre for over 200 acres, 30, anything under $30 million is a steal compared to what historical uh, valuation has been for recreational property in the city. And as a matter of fact, there are some direct economic benefits as indicated by Dr. Ken Johnson of FAU I think that all of you have seen his report that came out uh, about a month and a half ago. And that report points out that uh, property near or on golf courses typically is valued and sold at anywhere from 8 to 12% more than properties who are not on golf courses. 
based on the valuation of all the properties within that area. The city and the park district will be getting direct benefits of hundreds of thousands of dollars per year as long as that is operated as a golf course. I can tell you that uh, residents are certainly anxious uh, to get a firm contract signed between the District of Lennar with the financing cooperation of the city. The 27 week old layout is a successful layout as shown financially by the Osprey, not only Osprey Point, but also Westchester uh, Golf Club in Boynton Beach. I tried to get a tee time for uh, uh, either one of these courses recently, four days in advance, the only tee time we get was three o'clock. So there's big demand, and this is not for 15 or $20 per round. $66 a round for Osprey, over $50 a round for, for Westchester. The National Golf Foundation did a study, a comprehensive study before Osprey Point was developed. They forecast a million dollars per year in profit. Guess what's happened? Over a million dollars a year per, of profit for Osprey, directly benefiting the county. I certainly think that the economic uh, demographics of East Boca is better than the economic demographics of West Boca. So therefore, the direct economic benefit, not counting the tourists and the additional revenue that would come in, would more than uh, outweigh uh, any costs that we're looking at initially. This is a win-win for the city, the park district, and the residents. So I thank you for your cooperation. Followed by Don Huber. Don Huber followed by Bruce Smith. Chief been our attorney, and he was not allowed in because of fire marshal restrictions until minutes ago, so he's waived for me. Go ahead. First of all, let me make it clear: I'm here on behalf of the 1,700 properties covered by. Can we have your name and address for the record, yeah, please. Don Huber, 360 North 167, number 101, Boulder Hill. I've been a resident of Oakland for 20 years. There was a snowbird to family homes here for 30 years before that. We've had family homes in Oakland for 52 years. We are currently facing a problem with this course, and I'm not opposed to your doing a deal. Let me make that clear. I'm not opposed to it being a public course. We have formed an association because the Wells Fargo organization, or Reduce, has violated the restricted deed covenant, which I won't go into detail. I'm sure you're well aware of that. The restricted deed covenant requires it be maintained as a golf course in perpetuity. And by the way, with the exception of Mr. Duquette and I agreeing on wanting the course reopened, we don't agree on much else because Bob lives near where they were going to develop, and that caused him to be opposed to the development of the former owner, which is part of the reason I think why it's closed today. But I will say, from a standpoint of what you're considering and what you're looking at doing, you need to think about several things. I've had people come to us, some of which are in the room today, and do not want to speak. They presented me with evidence of impropriety that I am very disturbed about. And I want to ask, is there anybody on the council who knows of anybody in your colleague circle or in your family who has cut a deal with Lennar Homes in January of 2015? I'm assuming from your silence nobody cares to acknowledge, and maybe you don't know, but there are witnesses to a deal that was being worked on between someone very close to someone sitting at this table and Lennar Homes. And it's a very, very troubling situation. When you're talking about appraisals of three to five, and I will suggest to Mr. Seaman and the other speakers, the appraisals locally done and done by a professional golf course organization are between three and five million and possibly six million. The county tax assessor has appraised it as being in the four, five, six million dollar range. And as one who has taught real estate law and real estate finance, although it was many years ago, I can speak with a little degree of expertise and tell you the four million dollar deal that was recorded by Wells Fargo in December of last year, transferred in January of this of 16, was a four million dollar price that can be arguably said to be the fair market value. And it's funny how the course was being offered to you for months at $10 million value. And that was supposed to be a deal they were willing to do. And they, by the way, we were called by the NARS general counsel, Mr. Handler, who I'm confused because I also understand he represents the city on other matters. But he's general, he introduced himself to us as general counsel for the Lennar organization. If that's the case, 
then why will they not tell us the details of their deal? Because we have been told the Wells Fargo has already received $10 million toward their $17.9 million judgment being satisfied. And if Lennar was willing to offer it for 10 a few months ago, a few weeks ago, they're now saying it's worth 23 or 24. And coincidentally, Thank you, Mr. Just Mr. coincidentally there appears to be a lot of to offer the highest price of the other course. There's something here that needs to be looked at, fully investigated, starting tomorrow morning by the Florida Attorney General's office. Thank you very much. Kevin Rodri, followed by Neil Schiller. Kevin, Kevin Rodri, Neil Schiller. Neil Schiller, is he waiting? Okay, is there anyone else? That concludes my part. Is there anyone else present who would like to come forward and offer public comment? Please line up again, give us your name and address. You have three minutes. Welcome. Hi, thank you. I'm Greg Galanis, uh, uh, Parkside Circle South in Boca. I've been a resident for 25 years. I play regularly at Boca Municipal. I work at uh, the Boca Hotel at the Golf Place. Um, and I'm, I'm coming from this from a completely different angle. Uh, Mr. Koski presented some really interesting data and, and financial information at the last meeting, and it gave me some perspective relative to what we paid for sugar sands and recreational um, use property. My concern is I play Boca Municipal. I'm very familiar with Austria. I play it on a regular basis. We talk about putting five or six million dollars to mow the lawn and you know make the course playable. That is not going to give us the revenue that Osprey is getting today. Osprey is a world-class course where they've invested a proper amount of money there are a lot of courses in disrepair that have a hard time getting players and getting $25 or $30 to, for a round of golf. Uh, I have the performance, I have the financials for Boca Municipal, I have them for Osprey. They're very enlightening. My message to you for Beach and Parks and the City Council, if you're going to do this, do it properly and it will be wildly successful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else who would like to come on forward and offer public comment at this time? Nope. All right, so we'll close that portion. Uh, so we're going to uh, have you on our April 24th workshop agenda. Uh, hopefully at that time you will have additional uh, information to share with us. And uh, if there's no further business or comments, uh, any comments, Mr. Rollins, for your board? No, Mayor, on behalf of the district, we appreciate the opportunity to uh, come before the uh, council in a joint meeting and to hear from the public. And as Mr. Ringo said, uh, democracy in action. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting uh, as this rolls out, I think, that I'm sure that we'll get through to uh, those uh, in the audience that this is going to be a deal that the uh, city and the district are to not pass up. So long term, it's going to be the best thing we've had in quite a while. In the well, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Weidrock. As you recall, last night did our work on his mention in our workshop. I had indicated that we had a few extra minutes at the end of this meeting. Perhaps we could speak a few minutes about the, uh, the, uh, the Herndon Park that uh, Mr. Singer has placed before the council this evening a resolution. And I guess we, I don't know if we have a copy of the resolution here. Uh, but Basically, I think, Mr. And Mr. Singer, I'll let you uh, make a presentment of the resolution, but I guess since we do have a couple minutes and we've had this conversation off and on over the last couple of years, perhaps we can get some consensus on this. Madam, Mr. Singer. Thank you. I actually just wanted to make one final comment before we close the golf conversation. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I think the last speaker's points are well taken, and that's why I'm very eager to see the financials that would be presented. What's before us collectively as a city and a district is the possible sale of one course and the possible acquisition and construction of another. I wouldn't want to go through a sale of an asset to create a, a lesser asset. So if we're going to do this, I want to do this right. I think everyone in this room would welcome uh, having a world-class facility uh, open at Ocean Breeze. So my hope is that with the financials you'll present, um, can show different flavors because I think the costs of refurbishment are not just to take it to where it was, but to actually enhance its glory. And that's the goal I think all of us. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Mr. 
Scott, let me just comment that uh, if you take a look at the projects that the Beach and Park District has done and how we maintain our facilities, and I've heard uh, the word world class attached to the fields at uh, Spanish River and known as the Horn Lake. And that's the same type of uh, attitude uh, and challenge that we'll undertake with the Ocean Breeze Golf Course to get it to a world class class facility. Uh, do you want to discuss the DeHornley uh, resolution that we're we have, yes. we're voting on shortly? It is it is well timed uh, for this conversation. We were several years ago talking about the conversation at uh, the DeHornley phase two. For the benefit of everyone, the resolution I put forward tonight to, for our discussion is to have a conversation with you all, which we can do now, about going forward on the long dormant plans for phase two to expand the rectangular fields over at the Hornley Park and to allow you to proceed um, with plans that have been there uh, that have not moved forward. And I know there are conversations we all have to have, but I thought it was important that we, you've asked, and residents have asked for more playing games. I think the time is right to move forward with that. So I know there are details we worked out, but I just wanted to say, let's get moving on this project. It's been time and time again. If you're asking for uh, my opinion on that uh, resolution, the answer is unequivocally yes, uh, Senator. Uh, we would like to move forward with that project. Uh, even as uh, uh, late as this weekend, uh, we were at the uh, Spencer facility and the park was completely filled with uh, children uh, enjoying uh, a uh, soccer game. There was uh, activities uh, outside uh, the park, uh, in the parking area with, uh, uh, that was entertainment for the children. And uh, we see more of that. We have uh, adults that have, uh, are constantly looking for uh, additional green space to play. And this will be a nice addition to uh, the city's uh, parks. One reason gives us uh, additional playing area, but also gives us uh, additional areas that we can rotate so that all fields can be maintained properly in a world-class fashion. I guess the elephant in the room then is, what are those fields going to be made of? Well, if I may, sir. <clears throat> Today, in the local newspapers, is being placed a request for proposals for architects engineers for three artificial fields at Patrick Park. We will receive proposals on March 31st, and we will proceed with the construction of artificial surface fields at Patrick Park. So we would anticipate, without fingers crossed, that fields at the second phase of New Orleans would be natural grass. That it would make a perfect blend in the community Sounds very similar to what we agreed to a year and a half ago. That was our policy direction at that yeah. time, so we're, we're happy and, and uh, come to our meeting at 6 p.m. Uh, in the council chambers, and you'll see uh, us take action on that resolution. You finally come to our schools. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. So, uh, folks, our next uh, opportunity to hear the facts and discuss this transaction will be at our workshop meeting on April 24th, which commences uh, at about 1.30 p.m. It's in the afternoon. We look forward to having you all there. We all look forward to hearing the uh, information that will be brought forth by the Beach and Park District. We certainly appreciate all of you taking your time to come in this, uh, this uh, opportunity, and we are uh, convening a meeting in the council chambers, a meeting 